right. It's still the function of f. It's still the function of f. Right, we've got that point there, which is our point E, and this was our point F. Right? So, we are to check now. Remember, let's put Y this side, red and that side. Y is positive. It's positive, and Y is zero here. It's negative. This is our y. Let's put the gradient. Gradient is negative. Gradient is negative. Gradient is negative. Right. Up to this point where the gradient is zero. And then here, the gradient. The graph is going up, so the gradient is positive. It's plus. Gradient is plus. That's our gradient. Right? That's our y. It's negative. 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 Right. Remember, we need the values of x. That will give us a positive answer if we are multiplying the gradient and y. Right. Obvious. Positive times negative will give us negative. Let's start here. Just below our x-intercept. Let's start there. Uh, we have having point A, point B, point B. Right. Point B is our x intercept. Point C is our x intercept. And also point A is our x intercept. Right. So just below point B, we've got negative times negative up to just above this point, which is our turning point. It's negative times negative. Right. Negative times negative would give us a positive answer. Where we started to have negative and a negative, it's below point B. Up to, remember point F is not included because the gradient is zero there. So up to where X is less than that point. So if you are to write that again, two portions from that point to that point. It's that part only. So it's where x is less than, is less than, from this point backward, it's less, x is less, because x is increasing when you are moving towards right. Therefore, it's where x is less than x at f, but greater than. From point B, going that direction, X is increasing. Therefore, it's X at B. It's where X is less than X at F, but greater than X at B. Right, let's check another positive again. Why are we saying we have negative? Because it's above the x axis, y is positive here. Our y is positive, right. So negative times positive, that's negative up to this point where our y is zero, it's not included, right. Positive times positive, that would give us positive. Where we started to have a positive answer, it's where x, remember it's above this point, it's where x, going to that direction. It's where x is greater than x at c. It's where x greater than x at c. Right. I think we have covered all this part of 
our graph. So it's one, two, three, where our gradient times our y will give us a positive answer. It's our gradient times our y will give us a positive answer. Same thing applies if you were being asked to find for which values of s is let's use g, it's g or because we have used f, let us just continue f it's our gradient times our y greater or equal to zero so now we are including the points where there is zero. It's simple. Here in, in your solution there, it's a matter of just changing that and say x must be less or equal to x at e. Less or equal to x at a. You are now including zero x less or equal to x at f x greater or equal to x at b right and again same thing there x greater or equal to x at c right let's continue Let's say now the question is asking for which values of x will the graph change its concavity? For which values of x will the graph change its concavity? Let's say this is the function of h, right? The graph changes its concavity at the point of inflection. At the point of inflection, let's say that's point a, right? So the graph changes its concavity at the point of inflection so which means for you to find where x or the value of x where the graph changes its concavity you will have to find the second derivative of h you will have to find the second derivative of h after finding the second derivative you will have to equate the second derivative to zero. You have to equate the second derivative to zero and solve for x and solve for x. After finding the value of x, you take this x value, substitute it, so it's x at a, right? Substitute the value of x from that point into the original equation. Always for y, you go back to original equation. So the answer that you obtain after substituting by the value of x there will give you the y value at point A. So, but then the question was asking you for which values of x will the graph changes its concavity. You find the second derivative, you let the second derivative to be zero and solve for x. That's how to find the value of x for which the graph changes its concavity. Right. Remember that we've got concave down and concave up. We've got concave up and concave down. X down and concave up. Right. 
remember it changes its concavity at the point of inflection, at that point. It changes its concavity at that point. Right, let's say now the question is asking, determine the value of x where the graph will be concave down. Where the graph will be concave down. Remember that we use the second derivative to find the point of inflection. So the graph changes its concavity at the point of inflection. So for the graph to be concave down, for the graph to be concave down, let's say this is now F. For the graph to be concave down, uh, this is concave down. Second derivative, if the second derivative is less than zero, that is concave down. If the second derivative is greater than zero, that is concave up. That is concave up. If the second derivative is equal to zero, remember that I did not include zero there. If the second derivative is equal to zero, it's where the graph changes. It's concave. Right, it will be concave down if the second derivative is negative. It will be concave up if the second derivative is positive, which means we use a second derivative test to check for the concavity of the graph. We use the second derivative test to check the concavity of the graph. Right. Looking at our original equation there, which is f at x, if you are to find a stationary point of set, we differentiate or find a gradient. It's 3ax squared plus bx, or it's 2bx, plus C. And then when you look, we've got x squared there. In grade 10 and 11, remember that this type of a function that is having x squared, we call it a quadratic function, which means this first derivative of a cubic function, the first derivative gives us a quadratic function. It gives us a parabola. It can be either concave down or concave up, depending on the value of a. This is a negative, that is a positive. Right. So, the first derivative will give us a quadratic or a parabola. Whereas, our second derivative It says 6ax plus 2b. That's our second derivative. In grade 10, if you are to represent the second derivative by y, it's y equals, this is our mx plus 2b. It's y equals mx plus c. So the second derivative gives us a straight line. It gives us a straight line. So 
So when you are being given that equation and ask to sketch a cubic function from that equation, a is equal to three, a x squared plus two b x plus c. So if you are to sketch a, cu a cubic function from a quadratic or from a parabola, number one, you will have to check the value of a. You will have to check the value of a. If a, if a is greater than zero, that will mean f at x increasing. If a is greater than zero from that equation, if a is positive, that will mean f will be an increasing function. An increasing function is this one. So that's why a is positive here. But then if, if a is less than zero from that quadratic, that would mean your function, not the gradient, your function, as you can see, there is no sign that indicates the gradient there. Your function will be a decreasing function. It will be a decreasing function. It will be decreasing. So your graph will be looking like that. If you are to sketch from that, remember that the shape here for this graph, if A is positive from that graph, if you are being given the graph as it is, the graph of that will be facing upward. It will be concave up like that. That's why A is positive. That's why A is positive. So its function will be looking like that. That's why A is positive. What is here? That is concave down. That's concave down. So the function here will be determined by the value of a again. If a is less than zero, that's how the function will be. It will be a decreasing function. And then for now, we are going to stop here so that we are going to do some examples and see on how to do all the work that we have done now practically. Let's stop here.